I start from the top, hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, the trachea, and you can see the tracheal cartilages on the trachea. You'll also see the right lung and the left lung. This at the top here is the apex of the lung. Way down at the bottom, the inferior end, we have the base of the lung. And of course, the muscle underneath here is the diaphragm. It makes that dome or arced shape to it. Now on the right lung, we have a superior lobe, a middle lobe, and an inferior lobe. So right superior, right middle, right inferior lobe. And separating each lobe, we have a fissure. So separating the superior from the middle lobe, we have a horizontal fissure. Separating the middle lobe from the inferior lobe, we have an oblique fissure. Right lung has three lobes to it. Left lung has only two lobes. We have a superior lobe and an inferior lobe. So left superior is separated from left inferior by this fissure right here. We call it the oblique fissure. So these are kind of distinguishing features. Right lung has three lobes, superior, middle, inferior. Left lung has two lobes, superior, inferior. Another feature that distinguishes left from right is this right here. We call this the cardiac notch. Cardiac notch is on the left lung. Now you can see the heart tucked under here, so it gives you a sense of the relationship between the heart and the lungs. And we know that our heart is deep to our sternum, but it angles slightly to the left, which is why again on the left we see this little cardiac notch, kind of an easy way to remember it. The heart angles a little bit to the left. Now when I disassemble this, I can take off the right lung, superior, middle, inferior lobe. I can also take off the left lung, superior, inferior lobe. Now, when we look at the right hand side here, you'll notice perhaps there's sort of a spongy look to this. And this spongy look basically represents the alveoli, way down at the microscopic level. If you look on the left side here, it doesn't look the same. What we have here essentially are three colors. If you look closely, you'll see dark blue, you'll see light blue, and you'll see red. So we already know what dark blue and light, pardon me, dark blue and red represent. Dark blue represents where deoxygenated blood is flowing. Red represents where oxygenated blood is flowing. Now remember in you and I, it's not really like this, but for ease of understanding, it's a nice way to do it. Dark blue represents deoxygenated blood. Red represents oxygenated blood. The light blue tubes that you see here are not blood vessels. Let me take this off for one moment. If I remove the heart, you'll see these light blue structures are a continuation of the bronchial tree. That's exactly what you're seeing here. So this is our respiratory system. When we breathe air in, comes all the way down the trachea, passes the carina. On the left side here we have primary, secondary, you can see these tertiary bronchioles coming all the way down like this. So there's air in the light blue spaces. Now let's take this one step further and let's talk about what's actually happening here. So now let's take a closer look at the relationship that the blood moving through the system has with our lungs itself. And I'm going to start right here. When we talk about pulmonary circulation, let me begin here because this blood traveling through here and traveling through this side is what we call venous return. It's returning back to the heart. And what do we have here? We have the right subclavian vein. You can imagine your right clavicle here. And this blood would be coming from your right arm under your clavicle, subclavicular, right subclavian vein. This would be the right internal jugular vein. So right subclavian, right internal jugular. On this side, that stands to make this the 
left subclavian. You can imagine your left clavicle or your left collarbone here. You can imagine your blood draining from your left arm. Left subclavian. Left internal jugular. So we have right subclavian, left subclavian. Right internal jugular, left internal jugular. And that leads us to the right brachiocephalic vein and the left brachiocephalic vein. Listen to the name, brachiocephalic, arm, head. Brachiocephalic, brachio is arm, cephalo is head. These brachiocephalics lead into the superior vena cava. And superior vena cava, of course, brings blood into the right atrium. If I open this up and show this to you in a little bit more detail, hopefully you will remember right atrium, past the right AV valve, into the right ventricle, deoxygenated blood goes up the pulmonary trunk. Now what happens? The pulmonary trunk splits into the right and left side. Here in dark blue, you can see the pulmonary arteries coming like this. We make a gas exchange in the pulmonary veins in red. Again, these are from the left side. Those pulmonary veins and again, you can see them from the right side, from the left side. This is a posterior view, anterior again. Pulmonary veins bring oxygenated blood into the left atrium, left AV valve, left ventricle, and then up the aortic semilunar valve to the aorta. And what's happening at that point? We are taking oxygenated blood through the rest of the body. So here we go. Superior vena cava, right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk. Right side would be there, left side would be here. So these are the left pulmonary arteries. By the time you get out to this level, we could call them pulmonary arterioles. Now I want to simplify this, and please understand, I am really going to simplify this in terms of easy easy understanding. Okay, it's certainly it's certainly much more complex than this, but let's get the basics down. If we have deoxygenated blood traveling here, what does that mean? Well, in very simple terms, that means that there's carbon dioxide in this blood. And what do we have to do with that? We've got to get rid of it. If I remove this heart for a moment, I want you to think about what's happening. We take that carbon dioxide and way down at a capillary level, way down at a microscopic level, the, that carbon dioxide jumps into this light blue line here. So we go from dark blue to light blue. And remember, there's air, there's gas in this bronchial tree. So imagine the carbon dioxide jumping from dark blue to light blue. And that's the same carbon dioxide, if we follow it all the way up, that we <sighs> exhale when we breathe off air. Okay, so if we get rid of that carbon dioxide here on our next breath, again, I'm oversimplifying this, but what do we do? <gasps> we breathe air in and we're breathing oxygen in. It's more than just that, but picture oxygen coming in like this. Now you have oxygen in these tubes. That oxygen jumps into these red lines and what happens now? These pulmonary veins again from the left side, inferior, superior, which are carrying oxygenated blood, then go to the left atrium, left ventricle, and then up and out the aorta. So what do we have at the top of the aorta? We have the brachiocephalic trunk. We have left common carotid. That's what this is here. We have left subclavian. So left subclavian is going to go feed your left arm. Left common carotid is going to go feed up the left side of your neck and go up to your head. In brachiocephalic, just like the term that we saw here, brachium is going to go out to your arm on right subclavian. Cephalo to your head is coming from right common carotid. So we're going to start to feed our body, our arm, the right side of our neck, the left side of our neck, and our left arm. Now again, please keep in mind, I'm oversimplifying what's happening here, but if you can picture this, again, deoxygenated blood comes in, 
jumps into the light blue line, which is our bronchial tree. That's the carbon dioxide we exhale. When we inhale oxygen, it comes in these light blue lines, the bronchial tree. That oxygen jumps into the red vessels here, and that's now oxygenated blood flowing through the system. One other thing you'll see here, if I remove this, is that the aortic arch actually continues down here. This is our descending thoracic aorta. As a side note, this is our esophagus leading to our stomach here. And if we look on the underside of the diaphragm here, you can see that cut esophagus, but you can also see this descending abdominal aorta because this is gonna descend down to our abdominal cavity and continue to feed from there. No. No. Mm, that's not it. What? Wait, what is this? Is this even a thing? Uh, ah, yes. Here it is. That's what I'm looking for.